Hello grade 10s, in this video we're going to be focusing on the introduction to transverse waves and in particular we'll be looking at transverse pulses and we'll be looking at the principle of superposition, constructive interference and destructive interference. Let's go! In the previous video, our introduction video, we briefly looked at the three different types of waves that we will be learning about this year. Now remember, transverse waves are mechanical waves. They need a medium to travel through. They need air, they need water. So when you think of a transverse wave, I want you to think of ocean waves. I want you to think of you drop a stone in a pond and you see the ripples. Those ripples represent a transverse wave. Now what's very important to note about transverse waves is that transverse waves are made up of a series of pulses. Now what is a pulse? A pulse is a single disturbance in a medium. A single disturbance in a medium. Okay, so it's the effect of a single vibration we get an external source, such as me dropping a stone into a pond. So a single vibration would be a pulse, and a train or a series of pulses makes up the wave. So if you look at this diagram that I have over here, we have this person, and this person is shaking this rope. So this over here would represent one pulse. A series of those would make up a wave. Pulses are made up of a little amplitude, so we will go into amplitude in more detail when we do transverse waves, but it's basically the distance from here to here. That's the amplitude. We've got a pulse width, and obviously the pulse travels with a particular velocity or speed. Now a transverse pulse is called a transverse pulse because remember we said that transverse is all about how the particles move. So a transverse pulse is a pulse in which the particles of the medium, like the air or the water, move at right angles to the direction of motion of the pulse. And in the previous video we said that's basically like the little particles are moving up and down but the pulse is moving left to right. And you can see that on this diagram that I have over here. Particle oscillation. Oscillation just means movement. The particles move up and down. But the pulse will travel to the right. Can you see that if this moves up and down, but the pulse is traveling to the right, that's at right angles. And that's why it's called a transverse pulse. Now, when dealing with pulses, we can have something called the principle of superposition. Superposition is the algebraic sum of the amplitudes of the two pulses that occupy the same space at the same time. Sounds fancy, but basically all that this is saying is if I have a pulse like this going to the right and a pulse like this going to the left, what happens when they occupy the same space at the same time? Because remember, at the moment they're traveling towards each other. At one point in time, they are going to be overlapping one another. So the principle of superposition is all about what happens when they're at the same space at the same time. And here's an example of what would happen. So say, for example, I have a pulse. So this would represent one pulse, pulse A. And this would represent another pulse, pulse B. They are traveling towards each other. Pulse A is going to the right, pulse B is going to the left. This is before superposition. Remember superposition, going back, that is just going to be the algebraic sum of the amplitudes of two pulses that occupy the same space at the same time. So basically superposition will occur when they occupy the same space at the same time. So pulse A, pulse B, when they occupy the same space at the same time, that's when superposition is going to happen. Look what happens. Because this is two centimeters, making a little upwards hump over here of two centimeters and this one over here of one centimeter a two centimeter crest we call this a crest and a one centimeter crest when they join it's going to be three centimeters why because it's the algebraic sum two plus one gives me three but this is important what happens after superposition is they continue in their original directions of motion so i hope this makes sense if pulse B, which is over here, if pulse B was originally going that way, right, it's originally, originally going to the left, and pulse A 
is two centimeters was originally going to the right after they meet each other they will continue in their original directions so if you take a look at the diagram we see that pulse b was going to the left pulse b this is pulse b continues going to the left pulse a was going to the right look at the top it was going to the right pulse a continues going to the right and their original amplitudes stay intact remains the same when superposition happens we can have two different types of interferences that take place we can have constructive interference and destructive interference. And I want you to listen to those words. Constructive interference. Constructive means to build something up. So look at what it says. It says constructive interference is the phenomenon where the crest of one pulse overlaps with the crest of another. And then we produce a pulse of increased amplitude. So say pulse A has an amplitude of two centimeters and pulse b has an amplitude of two centimeters can you see that this crest and this crest they match up they will produce a pulse of four centimeters constructive is to build up it creates a pulse of increased amplitude so take a look at this one behind me over here this is before interference Okay, so crest plus crest overlaps and it produces a pulse with a greater amplitude. And then they pass by like normal. Then we get destructive interference. And destructive means to tear things down, to break things down. So destructive interference is the phenomenon where the crest of one pulse, so yeah, we got a crest. By the way, a crest is if it goes up like that. A trough, you see that word? It's called a trough is when it goes down like that. So destructive is when the crest of one pulse, so I'm going to use a highlighter, crest of one pulse overlaps with the trough, here's the trough of another pulse, and it re um, results in a pulse of reduced amplitude. So in this example, let's pretend that this crest was two centimeters upwards, and this trough was two centimeters downwards, What's going to happen if you have two centimeters up and two centimeters down? What is two? Because this is going up and this is going down, we minus them. If they're going up and up, so crest plus crest, we add them. So two and two would give me four. If I've got two and two, so one going up and one going down, we minus them. What's two minus two? In this case, it's zero. So in this case, they completely eliminate each other. But we may get a scenario like this one. So this is the one behind me is the same as the previous slide. As you can see, they cancel each other out. And this will only be the case if the crest over here is two centimeters. The amplitude here is two centimeters and the amplitude here is two centimeters or six centimeters and six centimeters. Then it makes sense. But we could get a scenario like this one. Take a look at this scenario. Let's do example one first. So ignore example two, make myself bigger over here. If you look at example one, we've got a amplitude here of four. I know it is negative, but if you were ha if you had to state the amplitude of this pulse over here for me, you would say that it's four centimeters. Why do you think they're saying negative four? They're saying negative four because it's a trough, it's going down. So we've got a four going down and a six going up. Basically, overall, we have a crest with a pulse of two centimeters once superposition occurs. Okay, remember superposition? Position is when they occupy the same space at the same time. Now you could say, ma'am, I don't get it. How did you get two? Remember, six is going upwards and four is going downwards. Six is a crest. So let's write it as a positive. Four is a trough, so let's write it as a negative. What is six minus four? Two. And because two is a positive, we're going to draw it as a crest. And remember, once they've passed each other, they continue with the same original amplitudes. Let's look at example number two. So for example number two, I have a crest with three centimeters. Because it's a crest, we're going to write it with a positive 3. 
then it meets, let's call that A, pulse A, then it meets with pulse B, which has an amplitude of 7 centimeters. But because it's a trough, look, A is a crest, it goes like that. B is a trough. Because it's a trough, we're going to say minus 7. What is 3 minus 7? I get minus 4. Now remember, the 4 means that when superposition occurs, our resultant or our overall pulse, what happens is we're going to have a pulse of 4 centimeters, but downwards, a trough. Hope that makes sense. So let me draw another example here. If I had to have 3 centimeters as a crest going that way, and 3 centimeters, or let's say, two centimeters as a crest going that way because they both crest they will add to make five centimeters but if they go in opposite directions so let's say eight centimeters is a crest and let's say one centimeter is a trough what will happen because it's eight this way and one this way we say eight minus one we get seven so when superposition occurs it'll be a pulse with an amplitude of seven centimeters a little crest and that is transverse pulses. In the next video, we will look at transverse waves. So I'll see you then.